Hi, this is Jeff Wimmer from Studio Cycles and StudioCycles.com and in this short video I'm going to do uh, a quick video on how to uh, replace or install uh, the resistance rod on a 2012-2013 NXT or NXT SR. Um, not sure if this translates to the blade, um, but if you have a bike um, and it gets shipped to you and it has from us or from someone else um, I had a few bikes in November and December where the top of the knob um, takes a hard impact and it basically drives the rod straight through the plastic and it uh, explodes the top of the knob which means the rod has to be replaced. So if you um, have a bike with a damaged uh, knob or rod from us or from someone else um, or you get a bike from us because we're going to start shipping our bikes with the rod and the resistance off the bike because it's a simple install if you follow my directions. Um, so the first thing you do um, with an NXT or an NXT SR, and I believe a blade as well, is you want to lay the bike flat on its side so that the chain guard is facing the ground. That will expose um, the resistance mechanism in the area where the, where the knob is. Um, you need two 17 millimeter uh, box end wrenches. Um, we'll probably be sending a couple of small adjustable wrenches. If you have 17 millimeter box end wrenches, they're ideal. Also, um, you're going to need a 10 millimeter box end wrench um, to remove the resistance, um, the leaf spring with the pad attached. So. Um, let's say you're replacing the resistance rod on your bike. First thing you're going to do is you're going to uh, remove these two uh, 10 millimeter uh, uh, bolts right here, the hardware out of the frame, and that is going to run um, through the end of the leaf spring and through this space right here, and that actually connects um, right here. Just remember um, to pay attention to the order that this stuff comes off of your bike. Um, you can't get to the rod assembly if you don't take the leaf spring and the pad off the bike. So there's two 10 millimeter screws. Um, probably the big advice to give you on this is uh, taking them apart is not such a, a, a big deal, but putting them back on, make sure that they're screwing in straight because if you cross thread the rib nuts in the frame right there, um, you're going to have a big problem. So to take the rod off if it's damaged or um, uh, or you're replacing it, remove the resistance pad and the and the uh, the leaf spring. Um, you're going to have two pieces of hardware with washers, and again, you're going to have um, spacer, then the leaf spring, then the hardware. Make sure the washers, um, and also the pad's going to be facing down on top of the flywheel. Um, if you put it in the wrong order, you're going to get some weird stuff going on. Um, once you get that off, then you're going to expose um, this right here, which is the hardware at the bottom of the rod assembly. And this, basically, um, you need to unlock the 17 millimeter lock nut and the 17 millimeter acorn nut from the end of the resistance rod, which is threaded. They're locked together. So you're going to put a wrench on each of those pieces of hardware and you're going to uh, turn the top nut clockwise to break it loose from the bottom acorn nut. Once that happens, you can reach up to the top of the knob and hang on to that and screw those pieces of hardware off. Um, then you've got this big spacer. Then you've got a spring and then you've got a foam washer. And all that stuff goes right inside um, this tube. So let's say you got the bike apart. Um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to put this rod um, through, through the frame sleeve like so. It just goes. There's a hole in the top of the uh, of the uh, frame sleeve, and that's going to expose it. It's going to come all the way through and expose the thread barrel. Um, once you get that showing, then you're going to put the foam washer on. Um, then you're going to put the spring on. Then you're going to screw um, this brass spacer. Um, screw those uh, all the way onto the thread barrel so that they're up into the frame. Eventually, um, these are going to go on last. 
uh, the two 17 millimeter nuts. And the thin one's going to go on first, the acorn's going to go on second. I would say hold the top of the, of the knob um, with your hand and tighten the acorn nut at the bottom until it won't turn anymore. And then put a tool on the bottom acorn nut and put a tool on the top lock nut and lock them together. Okay? Um, and once you have that, and, and uh, uh, the, the brass spacer, the spring, and the foam washer will not be exposed. They will be up inside um, the frame right there in that barrel where the rod travels from the top of the bike down the frame and, it, and expo is exposed there. Once you get the rod assembled on the bike, and when we send this stuff, we'll have uh, the hardware will be will be greased, so you don't have to grease anything. Um, once you get that, then you're going to turn that knob um, counterclockwise to bring this to bring the acorn nuts as high up as possible, so you have plenty of clearance to reattach this. And then you're going to um, uh, put the pad so that the pad contacts the flywheel just under the acorn nut. And you're going to attach these two uh, 10 millimeter nuts. And probably um, the easiest way to do that is connect the bottom one first. Make sure you're going to go frame, black spacer, leaf spring, washer, hardware. And don't force the hardware. Um, screw this bottom piece or this bottom piece of hardware in uh, as far as it will go, finger tight and then manipulate the second one in there and tighten that down and then use a 10 millimeter box end wrench because um, the socket may be challenging for you unless you have a socket that fits in there um, but that's what you do um, you tighten up that 10 millimeter hardware at the leaf spring uh, test your bike and you are good to go if you need help from us um, we are available if you bought your bike from us um, we have uh, probably the most amazing facility in the world for indoor cycling. This is a 15,000 square foot warehouse. Um, we have a 150 foot workbench with 10 to 12 stations. Um, we have uh, bike displays like you would not believe here. We have a test area with all the bikes in one area. Um, when you buy a bike from us, we pull it from the box, we disassemble it, we go entirely through it. Um, then my guys, after we do a drivetrain treatment and a full analysis, because we find stuff like bottom bracket bearings, flywheel bearings, stiff links, etc. And once all that work is done, my guys get the bike fully together like these bikes are. These are going out uh, Monday. Once the bikes are all the way together, then I come in and um, I personally ride and tune every bike that leaves my company. If it's going into my stores, um, I have the only indoor cycling specific brick and mortar retail stores in the world that I know of in Venice and Laguna Niguel, California. Um, if we're putting bikes in a club, I, every bike that leaves my company, I ride, I tune, without question. And you can call me directly if you have questions. If you're buying one bike or you're buying 20 bikes or 50 bikes, um, we want your business and no one does what we do. Uh, we're the only company in the world that I know of where we do lifetime warranties, uh, even on our certified pre-owned bikes, uh, on most of them. Um, but any other company online that you buy a bike from, they do two things. They process your credit card, they put a box on a truck. And most of them don't even put the boxes on the trucks anymore, they just have a fulfillment center. If you have an issue with your bike, whether it be Kaiser, Star Trek, Schwinn, Le Mans, uh, Free Motion, whoever, um, typically you're going to be directed back to the manufacturer. And with us, um, we handle everything in-house. So. Um, I want to hear from you. I'd love to sell you a bike. I'm Jeff Wimmer from Studio Cycles. My telephone number is home office 888-909-BIKE, cell phone 818-470-2204, and my number here at the warehouse, uh, where I'm usually in the afternoons and the evenings, is uh, 310-973-BIKE. I apologize for the gravelly voice. I am sick as a dog, um, but I have to be here. I've got work to do. So, Happy New Year, everybody. Take care.